Hey Cake Charms and welcome back to another video. This week, as you can see, I have been joined by the gorgeous Jane of Jane's Patisserie. Is it patisserie or patisserie? I say patisserie. Good, so do I. Of Jane's Patisserie, <laughs> and we're going to do a very quick, rapid fire ask me anything. So without much further ado, let's get to the video. Now the reason why this is going to be so quick and rapid fire is because Jane and I are actually working on another collaboration which is, um, you might be able to see some of behind us, um, but that video won't be going up for a couple of weeks and we plan to do this one just to kind of tide me over, <laughs> but Jane needs to leave in about 10 minutes. Busy day. <laughs> So we're going to go really fast. Apologies there's no kind of build up or intro to Jane, but you'll see that in the other video when that one goes up. It's all good. But anyway, without much further ado, so, Jane, first question. How do you stop a cake from doming? How do you stop a cake from doming? Okay, probably means your oven temperature is too high. Normally you bake a cake at around 160 degrees. If you're doing that and it's still doming, get an oven thermometer. They're really cheap on Amazon and just check your oven is running accurately. Yes. I'm the same. Always have to have another oven. You know what I mean? Indeed. Ah. One of those. Anywho. <laughs> okay. Jane, will you be coming back to YouTube? Well, all of this has tempted me slightly. I mean, I need to get on my editing, you know, actually have time, but I plan on at some point. We hope. Oh, cool. We can do more videos. She's on YouTube right now. Here she is. Perfect. Of course. Top tips for crumb coating a cake. They're very messy. Yeah. The, the, the trick with crumb coating is you don't need too much buttercream. I do have a video here on my channel which I will link up in the corner for you, but basically um, use a small offset spatula, put it on almost like you're buttering bread essentially, and then scrape off any excess and then let that crust before you go in with the rest. Yes. Perfect. Cool, cool. That's what I do. Okay. How many times do you bake something before you decide that's the recipe? I think it depends on what it is because some base off the exact same base. Um, for me, for a cheesecake, it's the same ingredients, you can just then add a different flavour. So twice maybe, if it's something brand new, like New York City cookies, that took nearly 30 times mm. just to get it perfect. Absolutely the same. If, yeah. if it's like we, I'm sure we're yeah. exactly the same, we have our base like cake recipe, our base cookie recipe, yeah. or what have you, and if you're just adapting that to a new flavour, literally yeah. try it out, did it work, brilliant, yeah. do it again just to check it wasn't a fluke. Yeah if it's something brand new. My cookie, my like ultimate uh, bakery style cookies, I must have done a good 20 versions yeah. before I was happy with them. It's always with cookies. It's always cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to perfect your cake decorating skills? I'll let you know when I have. <laughs> um, I think cake decorating is just, it's like any art, the more you do, the better you get. Yes. And so, I still look at my work sometimes and I'm not happy with it at all. Whereas I look at it and to me it's absolute perfection and I'm there like, honey, if I tried, no. <laughs> I think it is just practicing and what yeah. I used to do lots of when I first started was I would just make cakes yeah. for people. Yeah. Like not for birthdays or anything, it would be like, I remember one, I had a day where I was on a course and I was leaving my year team at school with a supply teacher, so for leaving them in the lurch oh, I made them a cake. <laughs> So it any excuse to make a cake. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'll tie that into another question for you and ask, what's your favourite fondant icing? By any chance? Oh, well, first of all, we don't call it fondant icing. Oh. <laughs> um, no, like, this is a bugbear of mine and it's really silly, but fondant in the UK yeah. is, is a type of runny icing that you pour over right. cakes. This has always confused me, because even with stuff like royal icing, people can sometimes try and use royal icing sugar instead of icing sugar, but that's got the egg preservative mm -hmm. in it and it can not work and then fondant's the same mm -hmm. you can put sugar paste or fondant or see i well technically sugar paste is is kind of like an umbrella term for all of these okay. pastes so like flour paste and yeah. modeling paste they're all technically sugar pastes yeah i prefer the term sugar paste for icing you can yeah. also call it ready to roll icing yeah. you can also call it fondant yeah um i actually work with renshaw and i mean as in i work with them i'm a brand ambassador for them but the reason why is because I've always used yeah. Renshaw products. Yeah. When I first started, that was what I could buy yeah. in my local hobby craft, and so I've just always used it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, one for you. Book writing. Yes. 
tell all, how do you get published? I was actually quite lucky where Penguin approached me. So it's something I'd always wanted to do, it was like a dream, people have been asking for years. Um, but then I was lucky enough for them to come to me and be like, book? And I was like, book? So it's quite, for me, a luxurious process. Um, I've looked into many other publishers and you can create manuscript and three chapters or so I think I've read and you can just send them to publishers and see what happens. Or you can self-publish or, I don't know, I just... It's, it's a very different world these days, isn't it, publishing? Yeah. I think the, the, the thing is, like so many, you can, you can literally create a book in PDF format and then put it on Amazon and have it printed to order. But I think the thing is, publishers will come to you because you've already put the work in. You've 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 got this huge backlog of recipes. I couldn't even begin to imagine <laughs> how many. And you've also got the following and the audience who would want to buy a book. And I think yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? It's it's better to focus on on actually just doing what you're doing yeah. well. Yeah. And exactly. not look too far ahead. Exactly, that's why I didn't want to push for it too early on. I was like, it'll happen when it happens. It's something I've always wanted to do, like I say, but it was just the right sort of time, which well, is good. Congratulations. I'm looking <laughs> for somebody at your front door. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, um, how about, how do you get a smooth cake when usually it takes them a couple of hours to do? I think it's about breaking it down into steps, isn't it? So we've talked about a crumb coat already. Once you've got that and you've chilled it for maybe 15, 20 minutes to help it crust over, yeah. go over it again with a second layer of icing. And then my favorite method is to use my plastic, not metal, I have metal, okay. but I prefer plastic, smoothers. The reason, in fact, I have some, I have some here. It's the smoothest drawer. There's literally so many of Okay, so this is what I mean by a smoother. These yeah. are pennies um, from most cake decorating shops and the reason I prefer plastic is there is a little bit of give to them. Right, okay. So when you're going around your cake, yeah. it's you almost like that, that resistance is going to help you get a, okay. a better smoothness yeah. than with a metal one where there is no resistance at, mm. at all. No resistance, all the resistance. It's Too really much. hard. Yes. These are still good, you know, if you're using ganache and you yeah. want to kind of melt it slightly to get a perfect finish, yeah. brilliant. I like heating it slightly to like to literally smooth everything around at the end. And then my top tip, top tip is these, which are kind of plastic acetate smoothies. They're actually designed for buffing sugar paste, yeah. but these are even softer. So if you then go over the top of your buttercream or your ganache, when it's almost set, really feather-like touch, it will just buff off any imperfections and you'll get a flawless finish. Mm. Okay. Again, I have a video right here on my channel that covers all of that, so feel free to check it out. Nice. Yes. Nice. We're going to stick with the book. Okay. People are clearly very interested in the book. How did you feel when the book came out? I genuinely can't even describe it. I Obviously, it was a secret for so long, working on it, which was stressful, but it was just seeing people's excitement about it. I'm literally... I was, I was really excited. Honestly, even me, like it still doesn't feel real. Like people actually have their book. I've got my own book on my shelf. How is that a real thing? It's indescribable. It's like literally an absolute life goal. Nothing can beat that for me. I, th I think I almost have like Big Brother style. Not Big Brother the show. Big Brother like an actual Big Brother style. Yes. Pride for you. Yeah. Fact, we should we should show the book. Literally. Um, my baby. The book. Here is the book. If you haven't got it yet, I'll put the link down in the comments where you can go and buy it right now. Yay. Got a good one here. Um, how about, how do you achieve a bright white cake drip? Okay. If you want white white, you've got two options really. You can't do it with white chocolate because white chocolate isn't white. Um, it's, it's kind of a yellowy colour. Now you can add titanium dioxide to it to make it paler, but it still will not make it white. So your two options essentially are royal icing, which works perfectly well with uh, as a drip as well. And in fact, I think there's a tutorial on my website, which I will also link. <laughs> the comments are just going to be linked. There's going to be so many links for everything. Um, but you can use royal icing, which is also great for painting, or you can use candy melts, which are kind of a synthetic chocolate yes. made by Wilton. Yeah, I've seen those. Um, and that comes in bright white, and you can just use it in the same way. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Which has making squeaking noises. <laughs> Have you thought? about making an app? Oh, I mean, I feel like that would just be really cool. Do you know, you know, like to have your own app on the app store on that? It's, it's like the next generation on from a website, isn't yeah. it? So. Yeah, but I would never have a clue what I'm doing. I would not have a clue how to start that and anything. So 
definitely take some time. If you're an app developer and you want to partner up with Jane to make the Jane's Patisserie app, Come on, mate. get in touch. Please. I'll, I'll put her contact details <laughs> in the video description. Yeah, that would be cool though. <laughs> so we've got a good one here for both of us. I'll let Rob answer first. But what is your least favourite pudding or cake? Oh, I didn't even read the least part. I said it was favourite. <laughs> we'll do both. What is your least favourite and what is your favourite? I'm not a huge, I don't have a massive sweet tooth. Yeah. So for me, kind of my anything that's overly sweet. So something that's, you know, you get quite often in coffee shops are good for this because yeah. they yeah. they plan their their bakes to be go with yeah. a drink. So it might be overly sweet because you're having that bitter coffee. Yes. Um, but anything really that's like very like caramel, yeah. white chocolate, yeah. things like that. They just they don't do it for me. I need I need that counterbalance yes. of the sweet and the, yeah. the either the savoury or the yes. sourness. Yeah. And and texture is another thing. Oh gosh, definitely. Need some texture. Yeah, I mean. What you? I'm probably the same. Like people might think I have the massive sweet tooth, but I do like savoury food. There's certain things that I don't like or can't eat, like banana. So I don't eat banana bread. I love banana. I wish I could eat banana bread, but I don't eat banana bread. Whereas my favourite, which is probably a similar texture, is carrot cake. Mhm. Mm so they're quite similar, but that's yeah, probably least is banana. Carrot, carrot cake. cake. I carrot cake, cake is my favourite, but again, to give you that texture yeah. with some crushed nuts, either yeah, on literally. or in. Yeah, and then it's perfect balance. Cool, cool. Okay, well, actually, link to that, and let's rather than one we make ourselves, let's go commercial. What's your favourite biscuit? Oh, that's a lot of pressure. We were talking earlier on while we were filming that you know if we were going to have something sweet, it would probably be a biscuit. Yeah. So, what's your favourite shop bought biscuit? Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll go through phases. I'm going to have to say Biscoff, mm -hmm. because obviously it's all I know, but custard cream. Do you like, if I'm going classical to classic, biscuit, a custard biscuit, cream. biscuit, 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 um, yeah, custard cream. Yeah. I think my, my favourite is, is something like probably a ginger nut, mm. like you just tried those yes. posh um, like stem, ginger. stem ginger biscuits that we have down to mm. the yeah. So I love yeah. stem ginger, anything with stem ginger Can't is a really so, as a side part to cakes, maybe, what was your dream job as a card? As a card? Ah, as a kid, child. Um, it changed every few years. Originally, it was a milkman. Nice. I wanted to drive a float. And then Jurassic Park came out, and I wanted to be what I thought was an archaeologist, but I now realise it was a paleontologist. And then I wanted to be a chef. Yep. Um, and and then yeah, it, it kind of varied and changed yeah, all the as time. As it does. But when you're little. The chef was always there. That's cute, I like that. Very nice. How about you? I think apparently the first thing I ever wanted to be was the Queen. I aimed high. Fair enough. Yep, and then it was... It might be a bit too late for that now. A little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But we move, it's fine. <laughs> Is there anything you're too scared to bake? Anything with fondant. <laughs> and by fondant she means sugar paste. Hey. <laughs> Ready to roll, I think. Honestly, it terrifies me. No, I, I don't mind most things, but I'd say something a bit more intense, like donuts, where you have to fry with the oil. I think it's just more the fear of that process. Mm -hmm. um, but don't I you like have donut recipes on your website? Yeah, but they just a bit more intense to do. Oh, okay. And I always have that fear of the oil. Oh, so you hot. literally mean you're scared yeah. while you're baking it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I'll have a go at anything, to be honest. The, yeah. what, the worst that can happen is it goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. You can still eat it. Yeah, as long um, as it's edible, we don't mind. Might not make it to the gram, but... <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that's it. You just don't see it if it yeah. doesn't go well. We still eat it. <laughs> Quite a lot of people wanted to know kind of how you got into baking, yeah. where did your love of baking come from? So I think that's probably quite a nice one to finish on. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, um, ladies first. I mean, I wasn't lucky enough to know my gran that well because she passed away when I was quite young, but apparently I'm exactly like her. Um, she always loved baking, rearranging furniture in the house. It's literally what I have turned into. So bake sales at school, that sort of thing. It just sort of developed itself, I think. I just love it. What about you? Very similar story. There's another person at your front door. <laughs> <laughs> my, when I was, I'm sure I've talked about this here before, but when I was young, my grandmother used to make all the cakes and biscuits and sausage rolls and Christmas puddings and everything in our family, um, including like birthday cakes for all the children. And it was when she passed away, I suddenly thought, well, who's gonna do that now? And so I kind of felt like, I would step into the breach and I'd kind of just 
taught myself from there and yeah. I love it because I just love the joy that yeah. it brings to people. Literally, it's, it's therapy, it's for everyone, it's amazing. What a fab question. Okay, cool. Well, again, Jane literally has to race out the door. So we're going to wrap things up there. Um, as I say, Jane will be joining me in a future video, which will be out in a few weeks' yes. time. Very um, exciting. Which we've already filmed. Yes. But it's going to take me a while to edit it. <laughs> so if you would like to check that out as well, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button down below. Yeah. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as well. Thank, Thank you, you, Jane, for Thank joining you. me here in yes. the Mr. Baker's Cakes kitchen. Thank you for having me. It was you are amazing. welcome back anytime you'd like. Yes. Oh, and just before we go, I did say that I would announce the winners of my Jane's Patisserie Recipe Book competition. So I will pop those up on the screen for you right now. Congratulations to you both. Jane Yay. has very kindly signed them for you as well. Yay. So I will get those on their way to you as soon as you get in touch and let me know your details. Best way to do that is probably on social media. So yes. find my links down in the video description. But on that note, thank you again. Yes. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you at the same time next week for another video. Bye, Bye guys.